I am Lucy Edwards, Director of Strategic Engagement at Metaport and VHD Studios. And today I am at Compass in Manhasset, Long Island. And my guest is Ed D'Ambrosio, Senior Managing Director at Compass Long Island. Uh, so hi, Ed, and we've known each other for a couple lives. Yeah, that's true. Well, first of all, I want to thank you and welcome you to our flagship office thank you. that we opened um, about a year ago. Uh, and it's magnificent. It's about 14,000 square feet, and we house about 140 agents here. Uh, and we love it. It's been awesome. And it's so good to see you. Good to see you indeed. I was looking forward to it. I've been, I've been asking you to sit down with me for quite some time, so I'm very happy it's taking Well, you place. do know how I feel about you. <laughs> From the day I met you, and it's, you know, no lie, I always felt you, were the, you had incredible energy, you were an incredible salesperson that had passion. And I used to invite you into office meetings, if you recall. I do. And I used to tell agents, if you really want to learn how to connect with people and how to have passion, you're going to see someone that does it in a natural, beautiful way. And that was you. Well, thank you, Ed. I'm going to edit <laughs> that particular bit separately. <laughs> you should, but it's the truth. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, well, I really enjoy being here. I have great respect for Compass and uh, the brand, uh, the reputation. I, I know that we all go through some struggles, but everyone in the uh, real estate industry right now is going through struggles. However, your office is great. Your agents are very passionate and they they are very, they are happy, and uh, I still follow them from because they came from different companies, and they've been working with me for so long. So let's talk a little bit about your history because you have a great success story. You've been in sales for what 25, 35 years. Let's talk about that, and let's talk how you um, joined Compass. Sure, that'd be great. So this is a second career. I did grow up in a real estate family. I have a famous sister, Dottie Herman, and I'm not going to say she taught me everything I know because that's not true, but we had an incredible and still have an incredible relationship and we had gone in separate paths. She went real estate. I went a different route. I was in my own business. I was in importing. I traveled the world and she traveled Long Island. And I would always kid around with her. I'm like, listen, I got to go. I'm getting on a plane to California. I'm leaving for Florence, Italy. Uh, where are you going? She'd say Franklin Square. I'd go, <laughs> okay, see ya. <laughs> and she would always say to me, hey, you got to get your real estate license. You got to get your real estate license. So I did that three times. But I had, a, you know, I was in my own business and making a great living and I was traveling the world. But over time, I really started to see Real estate had great opportunities. And this is back in probably, I'm going to say the late 80s, mm -hmm. early 90s. And I'm like, hmm, this is something that at some point in time, I'm going to want to pivot and go into real estate. But at that time, I was making six figures, high six figures. You just don't wake up one day and say, oh, I'm going to pivot and leave my job. <laughs> so I had a five-year plan. And I set out over five years how I was going to segue from one career to another career. And I think this is one of the great reasons why I understand agents, because many agents are starting second careers. They are maybe homemakers that have been out of the job market for years. Now they're coming back into the, the, the real world and they don't know where to begin. And I would say to any of them, I have the formula and I do. I mean, the formula is not that difficult, but you have to understand how to create the environment and how to utilize it to your advantage. And so that's what I did. The, the rest is really history because it's all about having the right contacts, meeting the right people, um, being true to yourself and, and having earning respect and having people trust you. And those are all things that I, I will, again, always say to agents and to employees and to my family members. It's about integrity, about being trustworthy and having people say, that's someone I want to be involved with. And that's been my formula and my, I don't want to say secret, but it's really a formula, I believe, for success. Um, but let's talk about real estate and compass. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So 
by the way, I'm running the interview, perhaps. <laughs> so please stop me because I could run away with myself. But um, interesting, you know, I was watching Compass from a distance and I was at another firm. No need to mention that company. But um, I was watching them and I was like, well, this is a company that's really interesting. You know, and I knew that they were going to enter the Long Island market at some point in time, but I was watching them from a distance as they penetrated market after market. Um, and it started in New York and then California. And at some point in time, I'm like, this is a company that they're going to make an impact. They're going to be a game changer. And it intrigued me. And so when they approached me, I wasn't totally ready to do make this move, but I was really intrigued and I liked what they had to say. I love their platforms because it was a technology based company mm -hmm. that understood what technology, what was needed in the real estate world. And if you speak to Robert or if you ever heard an interview, he learned from his mom who was a real estate agent and he realized how difficult it was for, forget a single mother, but for anyone, male, female in real estate, it's quite difficult. And real estate was moving quickly. The world was moving quickly and he understood that. So his whole thing was let's build a company that has culture, but let's build it around a base of technology. And that's exactly what he did. And that's what he has done and in fact, one of the most impressive things is in the 10 years or 11 years of existence, they have made a $1 billion commitment to technology over the 11 years. And at one point in time, we had 1,400 engineers. Wow. 1,400. And the previous company I worked for, we were a significant company. We had four engineers. And then I would talk to other brokerages and I would say, how many engineers do you have? Oh, we have two. <laughs> we don't have anyone. So I realized the commitment mm -hmm. and it does take millions upon millions of dollars to compete in this marketplace. So it was built between, again, having culture, but giving agents platforms that they can work easier. They could be more effective and have more time. We could say more time to spend with family, mm -hmm. but let's go the other route. More time to make money. Because the greatest asset that a real estate agent has is being in front of their SOI, sphere of influence. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's where the business will come from. So again, technology with, with uh, again, a very, very important integral part, which was having the culture and it was off to the races. So back in 20, I'm gonna say the beginning of 2020, if I'm correct, Compass came to Long Island, pre-COVID, three months prior to COVID. And um, I saw some of my agents, they said, oh, we're gonna make this move. And then Compass approached me several months later. And I said, you know what? It's the right time. It's the right timing because everything in life is about timing. Mm -hmm. right? It's not about just doing something. It's about, is it timed right? And I felt that everything was aligned. And so I came to Compass. I was working in, in the Hamptons for one year. I had a non-compete. And that was awesome because I got to see really um, a, an area that we had been there for five years. All right, and we and in five years we had grown a three billion dollar business. We had about a two hundred agent base headcount. Really? Oh yeah. So it was significant. So that was really good for me to see because I'm like, okay, now I'm seeing something. The vision that was five years ago. Now I've seen what they've done in this short window of time. Mm -hmm. And here we are now in 2023. We're going to be hitting our third year in a, I think about another half, of, uh, six months or so. And Long Island has over 500 agents. So total between the two regions, we have 700 plus agents. We are doing about $6 billion. Long Island, uh, Nassau, Suffolk, we did two and a half billion dollars. And as I mentioned, uh, the Hamptons you know, did three billion. So we are really making an impact with a small headcount in relationship to some of the other brokerages. Um, and 
I only see it growing and I only see it getting better because I, I, what Compass has done is they realize that you have to have an incredible team at every level. So not only did they hire the best management, <laughs> thank you, yeah. but they hired the best people to serve the agents in technology, in marketing, um, and then they went out and hired the best of the best. So they built their sales team around getting like a, uh, a, an A team. They have A team. So I always say that at Compass, you didn't ask to join Compass. You were asked to join Compass. We didn't co you didn't come to us. We came to you. Which is a huge difference. Yes. So right? we're only chosen, not chosen, but only well, preferred. Chosen, really chosen. When you think about it, we wanted the best of the best. And I think that was an incredible strategy because we did hire the best of the best. And that's how you have growth in three years, the way we've had it. Right. All right. Now we add to the best of the best. We have, you know, a great talent of, of we call them, you know, the leaders of the team or the principals of the team. But now we have teams that are bringing in incredible agents. And every day, I would tell you, probably within a week, every week, I'm getting 10 to 15 calls, people asking, can I join Compass? And then I'm on a national feed and it's amazing. I would say 10 a day, probably 50 to 60 agents nationally were bringing in. Okay, and these are all people at, at oh, a high fairly end, high, high productive, level, productive, high productive level, agents. Yeah. yeah. I think since, I, I'm going to say since January, we've brought in a thousand agents nationwide. nationwide. How many offices do you have on Long Island? Altogether? Long Island, we have, um, not including the Hamptons, uh -huh. there's 13 offices. And then in the Hamptons, we have six, so there's 19 in total. Obviously, we had an expansion that we will begin again, but right now we put it on hold there for the is moment. there's no reason, you know, like right now, not everyone is coming to the office. You can share offices probably. And well, I would tell you this, here at Compass, we have a different thought process. Oh yeah? Is every employee is mandated to be back in the office. All right? I, 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 I am yeah, for it. I only do live meetings. All right, we will feed them. We have an internal, uh, I'll call it an internal, we workplace that you can listen to a meeting but you cannot interact and we're getting consistently at office meetings 50 60 70 agents coming in and it's an incredible experience because it's much needed oh it's much absolutely needed. no no i'm i'm one, i unfortunately i moved to florida we don't have an office there obviously because i'm there by myself but i really i really miss that atmosphere i miss talking to people I miss uh, just having a coffee break and step away. That's right. Now I, uh, I am on uh, third floor. My husband is on the first floor. We meet for for coffee on the second floor, but it's not the same, you know. Yeah, no, it's it's very very true. And well, I struggled during the pandemic because I'm a people person. I like to be in front of people, and I was doing Zoom meetings, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> I'm good but I'm looking at a gallery of maybe 150 people on a little monitor and half of them aren't, they have the video shut down. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if they're really paying attention or not. I can't get the feedback because I can't see body language. Mm -hmm. I can't see the physiology of what they're exactly. thinking, right? Because those are all indicators. And so it was really, really hard. But then I just said, you know what? I'm just going to talk. <laughs> I'm just going to be me. Yeah, right. And hopefully that's going to motivate agents. And I will tell you this, most agents will say to me, it's so refreshing to be in a live meeting because that interaction, that, that one colleague to another sharing good stories, sharing bad stories, sharing experiences, mm -hmm. there's nothing like that face to face. Well, let's talk a little bit more about agents, uh, individual agents. And at Compass, you have the best of the best. Some of them, I'm sure, can be very high maintenance, I should say. How you deal with that? And I see that you have quite a few private offices within yes. your office where agents have their own, maybe 
just you know something arranged for their team, for example. Um, how do you pick and choose who gets what? Well, that's always based on like the real world is always based on production, all right. And in the sales world, I and I was always in sales. Many people there was that number one agent versus the hundredth agent. Did that, or the hundredth salesperson? Did that make the person that sat at a hundred bad or inept? No, it gave them something to focus on, mm -hmm. where they needed to go. Being number one is always always tough because you're always at this threshold. But you know, I'm a big sports person and I follow sports. I don't play it like I used to, but. When I watch, oh yes, you do. You are in, you are on your bicycle. <laughs> well, yes, making, making tens and tens. Of well, that's true, and and that's a good thing. But I look at sport uh, athletes, male or female, it doesn't really matter. But the mindset and the success rate, the failure rate. You know, I always say to to my children, to my agents. Sometimes my agents are my children. <laughs> you know, it's really you know failure brings success. You know, there's very few stories where someone just snapped their fingers and they made it. Most stories, if you look at them, um, there are people that struggled to get to the top. There's always a struggle. It never stops. And, you know, it's really life. And I did this. This came about when I was riding a bike. And I remember one of my mentors, who's no longer in real estate, he's somewhere in Spain now running around or bicycling around. <laughs> He's a young guy, but he retired. And he would always tell me, Ed, you know, when you're on your bike doing that 100 mile ride, it's, it's, it's a ride, it's not a race. And I thought about that and I'm like, hmm, it's a ride, it's not a race. And I used to ride my bike going, oh my God, I got 40 more miles to go. This is not a race, it's a ride. Enjoy the fresh air, enjoy the view, and think about what it's doing to your body and your soul and your mind. And so that's what really business is about. Business is not about a race. And I learned that not the hard way, but when I was a young man, I wanted to be like, snap my fingers. I wanted to be the best. I wanted to make the most money. I wanted to run the world, all right? And then I realized years later that if you take it slow, pace yourself, go easy, learn. When you fail at something, learn from that failure. You know, it's the difference between a growth mindset and a fixed mindset. Mm -hmm. You know, there is a learning curve always. And if you approach business and your personal life like that, I think you'll, you'll have a full life and you'll be able to look at things much, much more um, crystal clear. And probably more appreciative to everything you are getting back and uh, for everything you are doing and how you are paying back to the society and to oh, your definitely. community. Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, it's, it makes yeah. I, not, again, not to interrupt, but that's a whole nother conversation because when you are young and you're building a, a business, you're building a career, you have maybe a family, you have young children, maybe you don't, but you don't have time to enjoy what's around you. You really don't. But what they found that as people get older in life, things become more important, like giving back, having meaning, all of those things. And I found that as I was growing my business, I took a deep breath and I'm like, there's a world in front of us. There's nature, there's, there's, there's beauty in everything that's around us. Are we really looking at it? And most people don't. We don't because we have blinders on. We have well, blinders. and like when you, like you said, when when I was young, I had three jobs, you know, and I worked every weekend. So just as I did, <laughs> but so. that was old school. <laughs> today is new school. Yeah, today yeah. today children come to their parents and they say, "Hey, I don't want to work a weekend. Can, can you help yeah. me out here?" <laughs> well, I remember my first job. I was about, I think it was 13, 12 and a half. And I was sleeping, it was a Saturday morning around 11 o'clock in the morning, and my dad woke me up, <laughs> he goes, get dressed, and he brought me to an Army Navy store in the neighborhood, and he introduced me to the owner, and I got hired that day in uh, retail. And after, so the guy said, uh, his name was Al, and he said, all right, go into the stock room and check in this merchandise. And I did that for about an hour, and then it got busy. And he called me out, he goes, kid, 
get on the floor and sell. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I never looked back. I never went back into that stock room. At 16, I was the buyer for his store. I was, uh, I was running his store. He was never there. He had a son-in-law that I was working with. I was in just you know finishing high school. And I worked in retail all through uh, college. And it taught me, look, again, my father was someone that worked. He was a union worker. He was blue collar. He worked. And I didn't, have, you know, I always say he wasn't like the typical dad that I would see on television back then. Like, you know, the father knows best. You know, they're smoking a pipe and they're wearing, you know, a cardigan. My father was at school of old knocks, you know, and he's like, you know, give me a, a tap in the head. But I realized years later that my father taught me by doing not by his words, because his words really, he didn't know how to really express himself, but it was in his actions. I learned how to be a good person. I learned how to give back. I learned to have to work hard. Even though growing up, I thought it was insane. I'm like, that guy's crazy. <laughs> Why would I want to do this? But I did it and you know, I learned from it. And it was a lesson that, like I said, it took me many, many years to really understand it. Um, but finally I got it and the rest again is history. It's, it's, it's been a, a good guiding, it's been a, a road that I've traveled through his, him teaching me, but through actions. Well, coming back to real estate and talking about your life story, which is beautiful, by the way, absolutely, well, absolutely beautiful. It just made me emotional. Um, but agents, I see CEOs of their own business. They really have to run their own business. How do you guide them? How do you talk to them about being focused and, and putting priorities in place? Keep in mind their families and at the same time be true to themselves and keep that passion because without waking up in the morning and you don't have, without being passionate about why you are here today at campus at this conference room, I think life would be so miserable. So yeah. you have to feel that. Well, I tell them a story that when I was working in the garment industry, I was out in California working with the number one salesman in the country. His name was Harris. And this guy was making a lot of money back then. And I asked him, I'm like, Harris, how do you do it? He goes, I wake up every day. And he goes, I just do my job. And the money follows me. And I followed that principle. And I told this to agents all the time. First off, remember, as an independent contractor, these agents have no salary. I really feel for them because I understand how difficult it is, especially if you are the primary provider of your family, where's my money coming from? You know, And it's not like you make a deal today and it closes tomorrow. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can make a deal today, it could be four months, five months out. So you're always really working three to four months out. So it's very difficult. So the first thing I talk about is obviously the mindset. You have to have a plan. You have to put it down on paper. You have to be scheduled. You have to have time management. And I almost equate it, and I thank Tony Robbins. I'm a disciple of Tony Robbins. I'm actually still studying to get my uh, certification. Oh, really? Yes, in um, being a coach. Well, I'm, co I'm certified in real estate coaching, but life coaching. I'm going through It's a 1,000 hours. It's really pretty intense. but. Um, I really believe that it's all how you design. You have to work by design, not by default. Mm -hmm. You really have to have a plan and then you have to hold yourself accountable. Sometimes having me as the manager or you could have a mentor, you hold yourself accountable. And then you have to understand that we're all people of patterns. All right, so, and habits. So it's easy to start a good habit and it's also very easy to break a good habit and have bad habits. So do you keep track, not, I, you can't keep track of them, but do you have consistent meetings with your agents? Do you, do you hold them accountable? Are you going through their business plan? Here's what I tell them. This is not nursery school. <laughs> this is, you know, big stakes in real estate. So they have to be accountable to themselves. And the first thing is they can't give themselves stories why they fail. You have to look at what you're doing or what you're not doing. That's 
number one. So yes, I'll do one-on-one -on -one meetings. Sometimes I'll do, if we have a team of seven or eight, I'll do a team meeting. Um, we do meetings every two weeks, you know, in offices. We have once a week, a uh, once a month, we do an all Long Island meeting where we have 250 agents on, on a, that one isn't live, that one we do on a Google Meet, but um, we're constantly coaching, training, we're teaching agents how to use the tools that we have. Because remember what I said earlier, we spent a billion dollars plus. Yeah. Okay, so think about having all these tools and I equate it, the analogy is you're in the army and I say, here, go out with this gun, but I'm not gonna give you any ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> right, you're going to go, are you crazy? And then I'm going to say, no, I'm going to give you this big heavy metal, all this ammunition, take it with you because my goal is for you to survive the battle and come back victorious. So the tools are there, but if you don't use them, all right, if like you don't use knowledge. them, yeah, if you don't <laughs> use them, well, you're going to be a casualty of war, perhaps. And I'm going to tell you this. I mean, when I, I am used to having people that work for me. I've done that all my life. So I had an assistant. I had people say, hey, do this, do that. I'd give them jobs that I didn't have time for, jobs that maybe I said they weren't worth me spending on because my time was more valuable. Um, but when I came here at Compass, I was like, wow, <laughs> I'm really behind the curve here. I need to learn more about a skill set that I haven't spent any time with because I had people doing it for me. So what did I do? Do you think I feel bad for myself and go, oh my God, no. I hired a tutor, I still use that tutor once a week. You do uh, Salesforce? I do, so I do it all. I mean, I'm on my computer probably now, 50 to 60% of my time if I'm not in front of agents. So I do it all. Do I know it all perfectly? No, I'm always learning. But here's what I will tell you. The, what I love about real estate is that real estate can be done any time of the day. Now you can't be in front of your audience at three in the morning, but if you can't sleep, which I don't sleep very well, I can be up three in the morning, I can be doing work on my computer. That's not healthy, Ed. Well, it's true, it's not. It is not, and that's something that we'll talk at another time. <laughs> but you know, but the good news with real estate is you really can schedule time around your schedule. Right. All right. And so you can integrate personal and business because it's just moving time around. Right. All right. You, so there's a lot of things you could be doing that you could be doing after dinner. You could be doing a, an educational webinar. You could be listening to current events. All these things in real estate, what I love about real estate, no matter who you meet, no matter where you travel, it's someone that can give you business. All right, but you first have to build a relationship. Yeah. If you don't have that relationship, I hate agents that, here's my card. No, I don't want to see your card. I want to know about you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was just watching uh, Dances with the Wolves, ah. which is, a, have you ever seen that movie? No, I just so It's a fabulous movie. It's mm -hmm. about the, the West, and it's about the white man invading the West where the Indians were roaming and they were living on the land. And there was this um, Kevin Costner, he is the star and he's in the cavalry and he's on a, a, a military base all by himself. And now this tribe of Indians meet him and they wanna to get to know him because they wanna find, find out about what is their plight? What is the white man going to do? They are going to invade our area. So they started asking him more questions and he says to them, slow down. What is your name? Okay, what is your name? And when you look at that, think about it, because most people, they're not thinking about making the relationship, understanding who you are. They're about, they're thinking about how is this person, how am I gonna benefit by knowing this person? It's the wrong way of working. The right way of working is I really don't care. Let me get to know this person. Let them see who I am. And now you build a bond. From that bond, you can have lifelong relationships. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's really, th that is teaching people because you'd be surprised. People in sales, they feel pressure. It's the worst thing to have, pressure. To feel like I got to make the sale. So relax, deep breath, enjoy the company, be yourself. 
and the rest will all follow. And I agree with you. And I do think, I believe strongly that relationship is the foundation of anything at all, if you are in sales. Uh, and that's how I, I used to build my business. And that's how I was building Long Island. Right. I invested myself, my energy, everything I know into the relationship. That's mm -hmm. why if you look at Long Island right now, it's doing so well because the base, the foundation is there, which is relationships. So I yeah, it, well, but I think, forget Long Island, I think in general, it's about yeah. relationships. Will relationships always get you to the promised land? No. But, but I it will, helps. Well, it yeah. does help, but I will tell you this, along the road that you travel, you will meet incredible people. And, and that is the learning experience. That is the learning experience. And one of the things I have that I have maybe a lot of people haven't done is I've traveled the world. So I know different cultures. I understand how people think. I get into the mechanics of the psychological aspect of what makes people, what turns people on. Mm -hmm. If you understand those secrets, it, you're going to have a much easier way of communicating with people. And it's not that I don't lose my mind sometimes, because <laughs> sometimes I do. When I'm on American Express trying to get to a representative and they keep on going, but put in your password or whatever, I'm like, representative, representative. So I do get crazy. But then I take a deep breath and I'm like, okay, this is not doing me any good. It's understanding who you are as a person. And that is really, to me, the secret of life is understanding you're not perfect, we're not machines, there's human error. And the biggest thing is to accept a mistake and own up to it. There's no shame in that. If I say to Lucy, Lucy, I apologize, it was a mistake, I didn't look at it the right way, or I was assuming, you're gonna respect that. Of course. If I make excuses, no, I'm not wrong, you were wrong, okay, it has no, it has no place in, in communicating with people. So, I mean, again, we're in, we're in the people business. So it's about understanding people and understanding how they think. And then you work, working appropriately. No, I, I totally am with you. Well, let's switch a little bit from people to market conditions. Like right now, and I'm sure that you are facing it every day, shortage of inventory, interest rates, blah, blah, blah. And some people, some agents are making excuses. There is a shortage, there are interest rates. Uh, I'm just so frustrated, I'm giving up. How do you keep up and how do you keep that positive energy in the office uh, and dealing with agents? Uh, and how do you help them to grow the yeah. business in, in hard conditions? So it's, it's a great question. And I will tell you, everyone is an individual. So there's not one answer. I might speak to you one way who, you know, you're passionate, you're a fighter, you're not going to give up. So I'm going to tap into that. There might be someone else that is maybe has a different mentality. They're going to see the glass half empty and they're going to start making the story. Because remember that a little brain <laughs> is working on how terrible you are and you're going to start buying into the, the, the press clippings. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I always tell agents is be aware of, or, or control the narrative, all right? Because I think what happens is many agents get caught up. They're consumers, just like everyone else. They're reading the same publications. They're reading the same stories. They're seeing the stories. So it's how they interpret it. So right now, there is a lot of confusion in real estate. But to me, it's not very confusing at all. It's another cycle. And guess what? We came out of that cycle in 2008. Mm -hmm. Well, we came out, we went into the Great Recession. It was terrible, it terrible, was terrible, terrible. But then lo and behold, okay, numbers bypassed 2006 numbers where value, home values were up. People, Asians were having historic monumental years. Uh, and, and that was then. Now we're back. We had a perfect storm because of COVID. Mm -hmm. We're in a new perfect storm. And the new perfect storm is we have government that is confused, unfortunately. And I'm not talking politics, but unfortunately, you have right, left, exactly. and they're both split. You have the Fed trying to curb inflation. And whether you agree with what they're doing or not, it doesn't matter because they're doing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> all right? And they keep on raising a quarter point, you know, 50%, whatever. And is that something you can control? I'll ask the agent. The answer is, of course not. No. Okay, so now let's think about it. If you think about real estate, people have to live in a home. Okay, so I'm going to ask you, Lucy, do people die every day? Yeah, Unfortunately, in, yes. In general, of course. You get right. married, you get divorced, you lose somebody, right. so you there's, gain somebody. Right. So there's divorce, there is death, there is financial woes. I can go on. There's a lot of different reasons why people need to sell or buy, mm -hmm. right? Right, so it's how you look at it. Now, if I tell you the seven or eight reasons why people need to buy a home, all right, the fixed the fixed mindset is going to be, oh no, but there's all these negative things. The growth mindset is going to see the opportunity because there's vast opportunities. Because until the day we're all tent cities, people have to live in a home, and that's across. Not only this country, the world, all right? So as long as you have that, it is an opportunity, but it's how you look at the opportunity. So again, it first always starts with a mindset. The next part of it is, is again, keep on doing what you need to do, mm -hmm. all right? Most of the agents I find will put their head down. Now, remember, we have the best of the best. So it's not that difficult because they're used to succeeding. So they they have that mindset. The ones that don't have that mindset or start, you know, getting off the line a little bit, it's easy to get them back on because they've always done business, and they will always continue to do business. Again, this the world right now is so fragile. Today I can say one thing. Tomorrow, snap your fingers, and it could be all bets are off. We don't control that. Right? I, and I, I tell a quick story. I love telling stories. Mm -hmm. I learned a long time ago, stories, people retain stories. Mm -hmm. They forget words sometimes. But my daughter was getting married, and she wanted to have a certain band. All right? And I think it was the band was phase four, I forget. They were a lot of money back then. Okay? I have to have this band. So she calls them. They're only available August 26th. And we'll use that as the date. My, my daughter says, well, I'm going to book them. So then she does some research. She Googles and she goes, oh, August is the rainiest season in Long Island. It rains a lot. All right? And I'm like, well, Shara, you can't control the weather. <laughs> right? So she then goes, 10 years. She does research. 10 years. It has never rained on the day she's getting married. So I'm like, listen, <laughs> this is great, Shara, but I'm going to tell you, you know, the, the law of averages might be against you. I go, I can't, you can't guarantee weather. Anyway, she proceeds to get married that day. And during um, a couple of hours before the wedding, uh, it was cloudy out. There was rain in the <laughs> forecast. And then they came to me and I'm like, Mr. D'Ambrosio, uh, we suggest you have to make a decision. Do you want to move the cocktail hour? inside or outdoors. And I'm looking at the sky, I'm like, we're moving it inside. We had a torrential rainstorm, torrential. And you know, of course, yes, but of course, what did we say? Ah, but if you get married and it rains, it, means it brings good luck. <laughs> so I'm like, whoever came up with that was genius. And it's true, you know? So uh, again, don't things that are out of your control, don't even look at. All right, uh, we're having a big event, an agent appreciation event on the 23rd of May um, at a vineyard on the North Fork. I don't care about the weather. I do, mm -hmm. but it doesn't matter. If I start thinking, <laughs> tracking the weather every day, I know I'm going to wake up that morning and it's going to be raining. I'm going to be like, what? And you will be very frustrated. <laughs> I just don't think about it, you know? Do and not. again, you, the glass is always half full. We'll have a great event. We're going to have a lot of fun, and that's how I look at life, you know, and be grateful, be be happy that you're able to do something like this, right? Absolutely. And, yeah. and, and for you, you're, so the North Fork event, is it just for the Hamptons or it's for the whole Long Island? It's all of Long Island. We're all inviting Island. all the Long Island agents and the Hampton agents. We did it last year. This will be the second time we've done it. 
and it's a beautiful event and um it, it's it's just nice being around your colleagues and, they're, and they're, they're socializing happy. they're yeah. happy they're networking because that's another thing that this company has an incredible network of agents coast to coast so i, I remember one of my agents her first month here she did four referrals Pittsburgh, we had just opened up in Pittsburgh, I believe it was Pittsburgh, one in LA and two in Florida, four, okay? Like that, because we really promote working within the company. So we have set up a lot of things within the company, and I'm not gonna get into it, you know, more mm -hmm. technical, but through artificial intelligence, mm -hmm. all the tools we have, we have incredible tools like something called collections and likely to sell. These are all things that bring leads to agents if they utilize it. So our goal is always to train them, teach them, continually growing, helping them grow their business. So yeah. it's a formula that's working. No, absolutely. And again, they are willing, they're already successful. They're willing to learn. They're willing to adjust and adapt Some, and embrace. But not all. Well, not all, but in your case, it's probably you have a larger percentage of agents who are embracing the technology and willing to grow versus other companies that uh, all they want is just to for someone to hang their license. And yeah. now they can say, oh, instead of 500 agents, I have 750. Yeah. Out of 750, 700 probably don't even show up yeah. ever. Well, and that's true. I mean, that, that's true in, in any, any real estate company. We don't have that. Uh, because again, we went out and selected. And select, yeah. and it's a different concept where we like we don't take on new agents. If you're a brand new agent, you can't join Compass. Right? They and can one, join the team. Somebody. They can team. join a team, and I love that because they have to join the team. The team has to vet them. All right, the team is responsible for teaching them. All right, we're responsible as well, but ownership now transfers to it becomes entrepreneurial. Because right, that team leader, the principal, now has a responsibility to his team, which is a huge thing. When I first joined Compass, I was like, mm, I don't know if I love that. Because I was always like, hey, it's a numbers game. Recruit, recruit, recruit. There's a fallout of 90%, and so be it. No, it does work. It does work. Um, does that mean you always get people that work out for us? No. All right, they, Because it's a hard business. And people think, again, they may be used to watching all the shows on television that real estate is an easy business. It is not an it easy business. It is not business. an easy business. It is not. I always say that I love watching, you know, million dollar, you know, these million dollar producers and all these, you know, superstars out there. One day I would love to produce the real real estate world. <laughs> and I can give you stories. When I was out there, you know, in the trenches doing real estate, I was like, oh my God, I had, you know, I didn't have 10, 20, 30 million dollar homes. I had $400,000 homes, $300,000 homes. And you can only imagine, I could tell you stories. So it is a hard business, but here is the, the, the beauty of it is, as I said earlier, anyone you meet is a potential client and you can make a like, crazy money. You know, I always laugh when people say, I say, well, what do you want to earn when I would be recruiting someone back in the day and be like, oh, a million dollars. I'm like, okay, good luck. <laughs> you know, that could happen, <laughs> yeah. but it is happening. Yeah, it, just it happened. is happening. But, but you know what happened to me a couple months ago? I, I was fortunate to meet uh, with Bess Friedman from, um, uh, from uh, Brown Harris Stevens. Uh -huh. And she was saying uh, that some of our stars with like Open House NYC and so on, and one million dollar listing and all whatever it's not one million dollar listing means nothing now right. uh, and it, it just they just make it look so easy and so simple you just walk in right you get your listing you sign the paperwork yes you're a little nervous and you hear you are in your gucci and your chanel but it's really not that it's getting up early in the morning it's doing your research it's following up right. it's excuse my french kissing ass it's mm. it's there's so much involved in being the productive successful agent not just gucci not just your mercedes bands it's yeah. it's a lot no it's true we actually used to do way better not at conference at my previous firm we'd have recruiting nights 
and we'd do them at major hotels and we'd you know run an ad in the newspaper and then we'd have you know a screen and we'd be running a it was kind of funny because it was about lifestyle and so we'd have some agent you know you know a James Bond kind of guy with a beautiful woman okay and they're real estate agents and they have the Mercedes tops down and they're riding along the beach and they have their laptop you know on the car and they're doing a deal and bam they just made a million dollars and <laughs> they you know, just closed they just closed and we used to show that and you know people would be enticed by it but it's like wow it's not hard if you really think about it how many hours do you need to to get a real estate license? I think it's seventy five hours today. You know, I don't think they've changed it. Maybe they increased it. I don't. I don't know. But it's seventy five hours to do million dollar deals. It's just two weeks. So you're yeah, seventy five hours. Yeah. Sounds right. So so it's a short period of time to be a hairstylist. It's a thousand hours of her apprenticeship. <laughs> so you know, wh wh where are we going with this? I, I think that really, if you want to be good in real estate. You have to really do your due diligence. You have to learn. You have to continue to learn and you have to research and you have to be a complete person. And a complete person is someone that knows what's going on in the world. I always say, you know, don't go into a home and tell me about the beautiful granite tops or Corian tops, whatever. Talk to me about the economy. Talk to me about the stock market. Talk to me about the value of the dollar, supply and demand. That's going to make you valuable, all right? Because someone's going to say, "Whoa!" All right? They're going to look at you and go, "Whoa! What does this person know? This person is on on. They're on. They're in touch with what's going on." And that, to me, is the best way of connecting with anyone when you show value. I forget the commercial that used to be out many many years ago. I, I forgot. Was it Merrill Lynch? It was a commercial that when this person used to speak. Everyone would stop and listen. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. When we speak, you, it's E.F. Yeah. Hutton. E.F. Hutton. E. I, right. I, I right. love that. Right. And I love that. And, uh, that is right. 1980s. It was I don't 19... want to date, oh, date myself. Was. Yeah, but it was. <laughs> but it was a great commercial mm -hmm. because it was the power of... When we speak, people listen. <laughs> they listen, right? And what about... Do you remember Cy Sims? Sims, the discounter. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, he passed away, but, you know, his thing was our, edu our best consumer is the educated consumer. Mm -hmm. Our best uh, customer is the educated customer. So today, the value that an agent has to have is when you're working with buyers and sellers, in many cases, they're more well-versed than you are. And that should never be. All right, because if you're working with a buyer today, the buyer, they're working to buy one property. It is what they're focused on. They know all the inventory. They know the prices. They know the comps. They know everything. So if you don't show up and you don't have value, they're going to go, what do I need this person for? So and the same thing with sellers. Everything's at your fingertips. And so technology is moving so fast that you have to have data. You must have the data. And now you have artificial intelligence, which is a whole nother conversation. You right. know, I mean, it, it, you know, it's incredible, but it's scary. It's scary because there's a lot of there's a lot of things that come with artificial intelligence, because here's what I tell you. We do market reports mm -hmm. and we send them out and the agents get them and some agents put it on social media other agents might do a mailer they might send it out email and i'm always like okay did you look at the market report what do you mean well what happens if you send the market report and a consumer calls you a friend consumer whatever and says oh i got the market report i have a question if you didn't look at it how are you answering that Right? Or if you looked at the market report and you're like, mm, I really don't understand that. And now you re get the answer. Now someone calls you, you go, oh, yeah, you know what? That's, that's a great question. Let me give you the answer. Right? It's being ahead of the curve. It's being the valued agent. You have to bring value. And as a manager, if I don't bring value, what's my worth? Mm -hmm. Same thing with you. It's what we do. 
it doesn't matter what you do, you have to bring value. You have to bring value. You no, have to I totally value. agree with you. And, yeah. and, and you have to prepare. Like I, when I go to my interviews, I do prepare. I, I understand the company well. With Compass, I did interview Chicagoland and Florida. Uh -huh. uh, so I, I, and actually in Chicagoland, I interviewed every person on every position from administrative assistant to someone with onboarding to someone with uh, uh, providing marketing and on and on and how they do that. So I really got so deep into campus. I could read lectures. I, yeah. I could hire people. <laughs> well, it's interesting because that's a, that's another thing. I mean, I ask when I hire someone, all right, I ask them, well, tell me about campus. They look at me and they're like, well, I go, well, I'm not interviewing you. I just want to know what do you know about Compass? Mm -hmm. And you'd be really surprised. Even a, and this is not about Compass. It's about most agents, yeah, most agents who do. they're working for. And it could even be outside of real estate. It could be you're working exactly. for a company. I asked you a question about the company. How many employees do you have? I don't know. What you, how much business do you do? I don't know. How many offers do you I don't know. Okay, well, what do you know? Right. <laughs> right? So I think knowing your company and understanding the strengths and the weaknesses and knowing the competitors' strengths and weaknesses. Not that you should ever talk down a competitor. No, you shouldn't. But you should know what they have versus what you have and then you stand on your platform. I totally agree with you. And uh, in, the, in my past life, when I was in sales, I knew my competitors' products just as good as in you my own, even yes. better. So when I go to presentation and I sit down with you and you tell me I already work with so-and-so, it's a great company. However, they do this, but we do this better. Right. Yes, they do this a little better than us, but then that you don't really, you can live without that and on and on. So well, I think didn't that where the, that's where this meeting started, how we met. And I was always impressed that you had done your homework and that's why I always said to agents, look at Lucy. Well, if you, you watch what Lucy does, you'll learn that that's what you need to do in the sales world. And you always did it. So this was great. Thank you. Thank I hope you. I, I hope I passed the mark. Here. <laughs> of course you did. You got an A plus. Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much. Nice. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And thank you for visiting me Absolutely. as always. Yeah. And I hope we get to do this again. Absolutely. We will. All right. Thank Fantastic. You, thank you. Have a great day, everybody. Cheers.